They have both wings and they can fly. Just one is elegant and dressed up and the other one is short and chubby. It's not terrible. I'm talking about two figures that are really important in art but that are often confused. Let's learn more about them. Hi everyone and welcome back to Exploring Art, this is Alessandro. Today we are going to discover the fundamental difference between angels and putti. They are in fact both really popular art characters, we can see them in paintings, sculptures, architectures, but why are they so important? What's their role or purpose? Nothing in art is casual. During this beautiful journey together we are learning that every single detail is a symbol with a meaning and that's true in particular for these figures that are often in background but present in many religious and non-religious works of art. So let's start with the little chubby ones. Putto, plural putti, is an Italian word that comes from the Latin putus, meaning boy or child. Today it means either toddler winged angel or a bit less common toddler boy. Put in fact can be depicted with wings or without, but for sure they are chubby male children usually naked. The reason of that difference goes back to the classical mythology. Winged infants were believed to influence human lives. The most famous one was for sure Cupid, the god of desire, erotic love, attraction. His Greek counterpart is Eros, who in classical Greek art is generally portrayed as a winged youth, but during the Hellenistic period he was increasingly depicted as a chubby boy. On the time his iconography acquired the well-known bow and arrow that are visible everywhere on Valentine's Day. During the Middle Ages, Catholic religion changed the role of the putti from symbol of passion to a more religious meaning. However, because of this transition, they were not really popular and artists preferred to depict angels instead. In particular, to avoid troubles with the Catholic Church that it used to take that stuff really seriously back then. It's just with Renaissance, thanks to the rediscovery of the classical philosophy, that putti became really popular with a final explosion in Baroque art since they were perfect to match the movement, exuberant details, surprise and scenography typical of that style. In Baroque art they represented also the omnipresence of God, but we cannot confuse them with the angels. The angels are in fact spiritual beings intermediate between God and man. They are present in almost every culture and religion, however, the most common representations of them are as beautiful figures with big wings and elegant floating dresses. So, we have already many differences with Putti, and another one that we need to remember is that angels are genderless. Even if sometimes they may appear to us either male or female by their dress or actions, that is because it's really difficult to depict them without traits that can recall a specific gender. And many artists played on this ambiguity. The earliest known representation of angels with wings is on what is called the Prince's sarcophagus. Dated back to around 400, we can see the angels depicted as the winged victories in classical art. From that moment, their presence in works of art, Catholic in particular, increased enormously, since they are messengers of God and a connection between man and divine. That's why we can see them protagonists in many famous art scenes, like for example the Annunciations. One of the biggest challenges has been to break with the static pose to reach a sense of movement that has been fully achieved with Renaissance. The cloth was used to help suggesting the idea of lightness and flight, making them even more beautifully elegant. So these are the differences between Putto and Angel, and I'm sure that from now on you will pay more attention to them in the works of art. Thanks for watching, if you liked this video please share it and check also my Patreon for some interesting graphic designs. Ciao!